Welcome back to our story. Our family has been exploring Alaska in an overland rental from Alaska Overlander. We've been here for eight days now, seeking out new perspectives of the last frontier in an effort to learn more about the many marvels of this land, as well as the Alaskan way of life. Today, we're continuing this pursuit by heading for the water again, but this time in a slightly different type of boat on a very different type of water to try our hand at one of the most famous Alaskan pastimes. So, strap on that life vest and ride along. Good morning, folks. It is an early start for us, and the adventure continues today with a guided trip down the Kenai River with trout fitters, coming highly recommended by our friend Tommy Murray, who is FJ40 driver on Instagram. Thanks for that tip, Tom. He actually guided fishing trips up here for 20 years, and. Uh, yeah, we're super excited to get out here and see what today brings. I have no idea what to expect. I've never done anything like this, so let's see what we can get into. Yeah. Ready? Yes. You girls ready? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> here we go. Yeah. Welcome to the Kenai. This rolling river of brilliant turquoise begins its course at Kenai Lake and then meanders its way east for 96 miles to Cook Inlet, where schools of king, sockeye, silver, and pink salmon congregate at different times of the year to make the arduous swim upriver. These unstoppable fish pass through three sections of raging rapids along their way to their respective places of birth. Here, they will again continue the circle of life by spawning and laying their eggs before dying, having completed their entire life's mission. It's this phenomenon that has been a source of sustenance for the people and wildlife of Alaska for millennia. And today, we're hoping to get a taste, no pun intended, of this rich food source and see firsthand what an Alaskan fishing experience is all about. Our guide today is Carl, who's been guiding folks in these waters for 20 years and knows nearly every rock and sunken log along this section of the Kenai. Look at these guys, film these dudes. Put those guys on YouTube. <laughs> Put them on YouTube. Put that guy on YouTube. He's given us a heads up that the most recent sockeye salmon run was slowing down, but had hopes that we would catch at least a few. It's a good thing the salmon aren't the only fish in these waters, and we were thankful that we were also ready to try for some of the world-class rainbow trout and Dolly Varden during our float. Although, these species have been designated as catch and release only by the Alaska Game and Fish in this river so any food will have to come from the salmon. Fish or no, we were just stoked to be here on this beautiful water and seeing it from yet another mode of river travel, known as a drift boat. And we were stoked for what the day might bring. With things being quite busy at the more popular honey holes of the Russian River Convergence, we instead floated downriver to find a less crowded spot. We took this opportunity to get a feel for the provided fly rods. Now, this was a whole new style of fishing for us, and while it's probably not the best time to learn on a weaving and bobbing boat, thanks to Carl's patient instructions, we were quickly getting the hang of it and doing our best to attempt a world record trout. You got it? I don't, I don't feel the water through these hands. Well, you should. It's wrong, though. I would just hang on to your hood for a little bit, okay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want to see if the fly bleeding the fly here. <laughs> Once we cleared the busiest sections of the river, it was time to assume the salmon fishing stance and try to put a bit of the wildest and freshest salmon in the world on our plates. Again, this method was very different from what we're used to, but Carl had us up to speed after just a few minutes of demonstration. But apparently no one informed the salmon that these casts were just a demo, and Carl's expert technique was simply too tempting to avoid as he hooked our first fish of the day and passed the rod to Sarah for the landing. Nice. <laughs> well, maybe not the first third. <laughs> yeah, I, like, uh, I didn't do much. <laughs> 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 the left over here. 
I want you to start walking backwards toward the shore. Don't hold the wheel while you're doing that. Sarah, you can try on your own here. That's that. Yeah. Nice. Good job. <laughs> I didn't do much. I reeled it in, but he cast it. Well, go do it for real now. Okay. <laughs> He's swimming off. Whoa. <laughs> They're strong, aren't they, Caroline? Mm -hmm. Oh, hang on. Get it, girl. Get it, girl. Good job. Good job. High five. There you go. Look at that one. In keeping with the spirit of tall fishing tails, I'd like to say that our salmon haul was due to our casting skills, but the credit goes to Carl for these awesome catches while demonstrating to us how to use the gear. With our early success, we were all bound and determined to catch our own set of sockeye. But after an hour and a half of relentless casting in the swift, bone-chilling water, we decided it was time to move on and let our now numb feet warm up a bit. With the salmon run drawing to a close, even our best efforts couldn't land anything beyond our first three. So we switched gears to see what kind of world-class trout we could land as we simply took in the beauty of the Kena. There it is. <laughs> So that's not a rainbow, but that's a dolly barn in there. That's part of the charm. They're like related to brook trout. Caroline. <laughs> <laughs> That sound is so good. <laughs> We don't want to hurt these. Come up. See how pretty it is? Beautiful, aren't they? Look at that. Want a picture? Yeah. Take your pick now. Wind cry echoes to an open. You come on in, play that simple song. And it hurts to see you and your living the life of the come and go. Oh, you're living the life of the she come and go. It. <laughs> Let it go. 
Second. Don't break him, just fight him. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, reel it in a little bit. Alright, get it over to the net for him. Oh, let him go, let him go. Sushi time. Sushi time. Look at that. <laughs> Whoa. Get it in there. I can't even catch it with my hand. <laughs> oh yeah. It's good, isn't it? Mm. <laughs> nice job. That was nice. That's what we're here for. <laughs> Heck yeah, nice finish. Real nice finish. Security cat. After a strong finish to our eight hours of fishing the mighty Kenai, we thanked our excellent guide, Carl, and made our way to the nearest fish processing facility to have our wild Alaskan salmon shipped overnight to Utah, where we plan to soon be reunited with our catch for a proper feast to celebrate the adventure's completion. All right, little guys, we'll see you back in Utah. <laughs> All right, well, that right there was quite the experience. I didn't know what to expect. I've never done that type of fishing, but wow. When you consider like how beautiful the water of the Kenai River is, the eagles just soaring literally right over your head, the salmon, the trout, just what a gorgeous experience. And even though we were warned that the fish were kind of slowing down right now, we had an absolute blast. Carl was an incredible guide. Thank you so much for taking the time to teach me and Sarah and Caroline how to use the fly rods. We've never even touched one before, so just an all-around incredible experience. So if you guys are in Alaska or planning on coming to Alaska, I highly recommend you checking out Trout Fitters. Exceptional, 
exceptional folks, exceptional experience. And uh, I can't wait to get back. I, I'm looking forward to maybe next year, maybe timing that salmon run just a little bit better, getting after them a little bit harder. So, but, wow. You gotta do it. It's Alaska, baby. All right. After a long day, we're gonna make it longer. <laughs> <laughs> Not that much longer. We're actually headed now down towards Seward. So we have an awesome adventure planned for tomorrow afternoon. Here's a hint. We've seen Alaska by land and by water. What would be next? Boom, boom, boom. With only 5,000 miles of paved roads serving over 663 square miles of Alaskan wilderness, your streetcar can only show you a very small portion of this land. So for this trip, we're expanding our horizons and taking to one of the more popular modes of travel here in Alaska. By now, I'm sure you know where we're headed. Having seen Alaska by land and water, there was no place to go next but up. Hey, how's it going? How are you? Good, how are you? Good. Our pilot, Joey, gave us a quick safety briefing, handed us our life jackets, just in case, and escorted us to our awaiting flight in a Cessna A185E. While we're no stranger to air travel, this is one of the smallest aircraft our family had ever ridden in. And this little bird had a secret under its wings, which we'll cover in just a minute. We'll grab the seat if you want. There you go. Mom, just don't scream. I'm scared. <laughs> Please don't scream too loud. <laughs> so what cool things are you going to show us? Glaciers and icebergs and maybe some mountain goats, maybe a bear or two. That would be awesome. Do a little engine warm up here. Traffic up here, 367, two miles to the southeast, 1000. Okay, yeah, I'll take off as soon as uh, the red one clears. All right, you ready? We're ready. Ready? I guess. <laughs> Big crevasses down there. Yeah, there are. After our bird's eye view of Seward and Bear Glacier, it was time for the highlight of the flight to land on top of the 700 square mile Harding Ice Field. How? Well, remember I mentioned this plane had a trick of its own. After takeoff, Joey had lowered a set of skis into position below the landing gear wheels. So now, all we had to do was point our nose into the wind and gently land in the icy snow 
next to some incredibly blue lakes. Y'all, if you want to experience solitude, try landing on top of this frozen moonscape and taking a look around. It was quite a surreal feeling standing on top of 4,000 feet deep ice, while looking eye to eye with mountain peaks poking through the perimeter. This massive ice field receives about 400 inches of snow every year and spills over the surrounding mountains into 40 glaciers, covering an additional 400 square miles of land as slowly moving frosty blue ice. So what does one do when on top of an ice field in late June? And what else would you do but have a classic <laughs> snowball fight? Lakes out here? Yeah. Are they frozen? No, they're open water. Oh. That's really blue. Yeah, it is, isn't it? <laughs> <A little cheap>. <laughs> <laughs> We're in the wash machine. <laughs> That's what I call it. Yeah, we saw you come over earlier this morning. We were camping just below us here. Unofficial campground down yeah. there. <laughs> Heck yeah, free camp. So what's your favorite feature to fly over? Uh, pretty much what we just saw, Bear Glacier. Really? Yeah, I like camping out there. I go out there camping quite a bit. The ice field is just amazing. Thank you guys. Thank you, that was awesome. That was so cool. Yeah. This is my lip. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hit it with your knee? What do you think about that? Yeah? You think we need to get a plane now? No. No? <laughs> <laughs> Once was enough, huh? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. It was yeah. fun. Yeah. What's your name? Joey. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right, thanks. All right, see you guys. Take care. Yet again, Alaska was taking our breath away. And not just from the snow down our bridges. 
Crazy enough, what we had seen so far was only the tip of the iceberg of this sprawling wilderness. While we couldn't help but want to keep going and exploring even more of its remarkable landscape and culture, we were unfortunately out of time for this visit. So, we reluctantly made our way to one of our favorite campsites from our previous 2018 visit to reflect on what we had experienced and prepare to return the rental rig and trailer before our flight south. Visiting another old haunt. You guys remember this spot? We were really <laughs> afraid. Our expectations were too high to get this again, but here we are. Last night, baby! <laughs> Last night in the Alaskan wilderness. It's been so good. So good. Not long enough, though. No. Nope. Here comes the mosquitoes I know. to say farewell, my friends. <laughs> Let me bite you one last time. <laughs> one last taste of your blood for the road. One for the road. Water is a lot higher than it was last time. <laughs> yeah. I think. Yeah. We could go all the way up to that. Oh, yeah. There, right? Yeah, that's huge, man. That's good, though. All right. Time for some bug spray. All right, guys, well, that's gonna be a wrap for this round of Alaska. And my goodness, what a trip it's been. What a trip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what was your favorite part? My favorite part, there's a lot to choose from, but I'd probably say that the air tour, oh, the yeah. airplane tour today. I mean, landing on the glacier, you, just, yeah. you don't get any better than that. Right. What about yours? Husky. Of course. Always with the Huskies. Yep. <laughs> See them sled dogs. Yeah. Huh? Well, I gotta say, yeah, my favorite one has to be with kayaks. I mean, being able to get out there and see Alaska up close and personal from a perspective that, you know, you don't get to see from the road, um, that was probably my favorite. And, like, once we got into, like, we just dipped our toes into the kayaking world up here, but there is a lot to oh, kayak up here. Absolutely. Like, I never would have thought of like kayaking out of Seward to like go camp somewhere. Oh yeah. And I'm there were all kinds of people doing that. Yeah, so, so. Yeah. Alaska is big enough as it is. Mm -hmm. 10 days is not enough to see even a fraction of it, but we're chipping away at it and this trip is no exception. Right. Now, if Alaska is not on your bucket list, I recommend you kick a few things off the top and slide <laughs> it right up there. Just bump everything down one. It's amazing, and with every trip, we fall more in love with it, and we will be back, hopefully yeah. sooner than later. So, with the rental companies like Alaska Overlander, it's so easy. There's just not that many excuses for you not to come up here, so. Yeah, like, oh, I can't take the time <laughs> off to drive all the way through Canada, or oh, I it's... can't afford the ferry. Oh, now yeah. you can come. It's such a huge commitment to drive all the way from lower 48, so. Consider a fly-in and drive-off option like Alaska Overlander. Check them out on alaskaoverlander.com. Book you something either for this season or next, but get it on paper because slots are filling up fast. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, I hope you've enjoyed riding along on this adventure, paddling along on this adventure, mushing along on this adventure. Yeah. and flying. And flying along Yay. on this adventure. We will see you on the next one, way down south in good old Utah. But until next time, stay, stay curious. curious.